So you're ready to ditch your centers in upper elementary, but you're still a little bit unsure of how to start implementing a goal station. In this video, I hope to give you the 10 tips that will help you get started with managing your goal stations. Hello everyone, my name is Bridget Spackman. I'm a fourth grade ELA and social studies teacher in central Pennsylvania. I've had over a decade of experience in kindergarten, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. I have a passion for ELA instruction that is authentic, and rigorous. If topics such as these interest you, then I would like to invite you to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you can get notified anytime I go live or I upload a new video. Goal stations are a great way to personalize instruction for your students. In the beginning, you will need to put in some time and a little bit of work, and it's gonna feel harder to set this up in the beginning, but if you do it properly, the payoff is gonna be incredibly rewarding. I've posted two other videos on this topic that shows me in my classroom setting up a goal station for my students, and the other discusses the ways in which the goal station can help personalize learning for your students. For this video, I've compiled 10 tips that I believe will help you in feeling confident and be able to manage this in your own classroom. Let's get ready and let's just dive on into the tips. Tip number one, organize the activities in bins based on the contents or the focus. So breaking down broad topics will help to ensure that students have a very clear understanding of where to find the materials. Think about your Google Drive. If you have one really broad folder for literature, you're most likely going to have an abundance of files that range from everything to, from grammar to comprehension. You'd also find that it would be really difficult to determine what you have to teach for a specific content area and what you're gonna need in order to teach that the best. So instead, you probably break down your literacy folder into different categories, right? This makes finding the resources you have so much easier. Your students need to do the same thing. I use black file bins for organizing my goal station into an IKEA four cube shelf system. Each bin has its own category with the files organized using hanging file folders. So for instance, I have a bin for the following, fiction comprehension, informational comprehension, grammar, word study, vocabulary, and also fluency. These are then broken down based on the skills for each focus area. I keep these activities in separate folders that are separated by the hanging file folders. So basically I have folderception happening. I have a folder within a folder within a bin. <laughs> so tip number two is have a code for organizing your materials. One of the most challenging parts of having stations, centers, or even a goal station is that you will always have that one student in your class who does not put the items back correctly. This can be incredibly frustrating as it makes putting things back time consuming and it also makes those games or activities that you have unusable without all of the different pieces. So when you find a way to easily be able to look at items, you can see it and say, oh, I know exactly where that item is supposed to go. And then you're gonna be more likely to utilize it in the future. Find a system that works best for you and your students. I prefer to use a system with abbreviations and numbers. So for example, if a student is working within the figurative language folder, labeled S2 for simile, then the materials in that folder will be labeled with FL colon S2 for figurative language simile activity two. Another example is if students are working in the literature comprehension bin under characters, the folder will be labeled LC for literature comprehension, C3 for characters three. The first one of the two letters notes the bin. After that colon, the letter represents the focus and then the number is the activity. You can create an SOP or what we call a standard operating procedure with your class so that they know exactly how to identify the different activities. If this is too complicated, you can replace the bins with an image to represent each of the different categories. What matters is that you have a method for determining which activities go where. Now remember to label all of the materials in each activity. This will be incredibly time consuming in the beginning, but it is definitely worth it. Tip number three is to have a way to maintain smaller materials. 
Having a variety of activities also means that you will most likely have a variation in the materials that you're gonna use. In some cases, you might have erase markers, you might have pawns or puzzle pieces that students are gonna be manipulating. So in order to keep this area nice and tidy, consider how you will have those materials placed into the folders. Simply placing them in the folder pockets may not be enough as students are known for flipping folders upside down when they're walking it to the bin. You can choose to keep some of these materials that are in close proximity to that goal station, but be sure to note in the directions that learners will need to grab these materials from this different spot in order to complete the activity. Some of the materials that might be beneficial to have in a different spot are things such as whiteboards, dry erase markers, pawns for different types of board games, dice, and so on. For other materials, you might wanna have those items placed directly in that folder for that specific activity. So some examples are gonna be puzzle pieces, reference sheets, task cards, answer keys, and so on. These materials are small enough that they can easily be lost if you are not careful. I do recommend using some form of a zipper pocket attached to, with like Brad Pult folders. Um, this is gonna allow you to place those items that are laminated in the side pockets. And for those smaller items, you can then place them inside of the zipper pouch. These can be a little bit pricey when you're looking for those little zipper pockets, but be sure to explore some of the different options that are best for you. If you're wanting to really cut down on the cost of trying to use those pouches, I do recommend Ziploc bags. When you open up the Ziploc bag, you can staple one side to the folder, making a pocket that seals. Tip number four is to keep all of your instructional materials in your LMS or learner management system. I mentioned in last week's video that you will wanna have a way to hit all forms of learning with your students. And this means that you will wanna have activities that are for those students who still need a little bit of extra instruction and for those students who are practicing and then finally those students who are ready to demonstrate their learning or even those who are working to extend their learning. Now, before I lose you, which I probably already have, this can and is manageable. So when you break it down into those different resources that you have available, you're gonna see it's so much easier for you to plan. So for your instructional resources, you can use items such as Add Puzzles, Blickets, Gim Kits, Boom Cards, YouTube, Anchor Charts, and so much more. These resources can easily be linked inside of your LMS. Now, I use Canva since my district pays for this resource, and I have created slides for each of the different phases of learning for those focus areas. Students have access to the slides from Schoology, and then they're able to click through the slides and access the resources I have provided. If you don't have this ability, then you can use QR codes on pages that are already laminated. Students can scan with their device, or you can keep a couple of iPads or maybe some computers next to the station for students to use. It may not be ideal, but students can be taught to do anything with consistency. Tip number five is to have a range of materials for your stations. Now, this tip is a little bit of a continuation from the last one, and keeping with the fact that students need a variety of resources, you will want to consider what are you placing inside of your goal station. Now, let's pause and let's talk about worksheets. So there is a time and there is a place to have a worksheet. However, these, in my opinion, should be far and few between. Your goal station should not consist of just worksheets that students are turning in as their final product. The goal is to go beyond simple recall. Now, if you have students analyzing characters and then completing a written summary, discussing the characteristics of those characters, then this is great. By but answering a question after question after question keeps students really feeling dependent on what you are providing for them versus just knowing where they need to go with the information. So I personally enjoy giving open-ended questions because it makes students think about how to organize the information for each of those questions. But if you are just getting started, I do not recommend doing all open-ended responses in the beginning, especially if this is something that your students are not familiar with. 
So instead, work with a variety of activities and then build this as you go through the year. Some of my favorite ideas are task cards, games such as like game boards or card games, matching games, those are all my favorites. Sorts, and I do love me some sorts because there are so many possibilities from using T-charts to Venn diagrams to having them use graphic organizers to sort different events. There are so many different ways for you, for you to utilize this product. And then finally, of course, projects are the final component for the types of activities that can range in so many different formats. But remember to start small and then grow. Tip number six is to keep a log of your goal station activities using Google Sheets. Now with so many different bins, folders, and activities, it can be challenging to remember what you have and where you have it. That is why I recommend having a Google Sheets planning page to help you organize your resources. I break up each tab at the bottom of those Google Sheets into different bins that I have available for my class. From there, I think about all of the different skills that I will want my students to focus on, and then I combine these skills that make the most sense. For example, I have one for characters, and then I have one for summarizing and plots. I list out each of the activities under that category as I print and then I make them. This keeps me accountable as it serves as a way to just mark off the activities that students have completed as they work through each of the units, but I can also double check that I have all the right activities there. I can reference this Google Sheet to access what types of activities I have and where I can add more options for learning. Right now, if you join my mailing list, you will receive my login and an upcoming email on Tuesday. You can follow the link in the description box in order to join this. Tip number seven is to maintain a weekly goal sheet for checking in students. This tip might seem like the last one, but they both serve you just a little bit differently. So have a page that allows you to track students and where they are currently working on for the week or even for the month. Now remember, because this is in addition to the lessons and activities that you are already doing in class, there will be some days that students have more time to focus on their goal station and other days where they're gonna be working on assignments that you specifically provide for them. So you have flexibility in having stations lasting longer than just a week or two. And of course, this will vary depending on the student because some learners will require more time and more than maybe one or more of those phases of learning. To help you know where your students are, you can choose to have a weekly goal sheet that you can just update. You can go as fancy as having a laminated board with your students on there and then just switching out the activities with a vis-a-vis, -vis, or you can go as simple as having a paper that you just write on and update every single week. Either way, this gives you a very clear pictures of what your students are working on. So for my case, I choose to use just a plain paper with a list of students for each of my different blocks. So I update this as needed and it gives me a really quick glance of what they are working on. Tip number eight is to meet with students and groups. Meeting with your students regularly about what they're working on during their independent time can be incredibly challenging. I mean, we only have so much time in a day, right? So especially, this is hard, is if you're meeting with students one-on-one. -on -one. This is why I recommend you grouping your students and meeting with them based on the skills that they're working on and or the final product that they have selected to demonstrate for their learning. Each week, I take out my student check-in sheet that helps me to keep track of what my students are working on, and I highlight using different highlighting colors. If you don't wanna highlight, you can just use sticky note tags that can easily be removed and moved over. And once I have my students grouped, I will meet with that group at least once a week. I can go over anything they're, they're working on, I can give instruction as needed, I can check in on work that they've already completed, and this process lasts anywhere from about 10 to 15 minutes, and I'm able to meet with about five to seven students all at one time. This process really helps to hold students accountable and it ensures that students are on the right path to meeting their goals. Tip number nine is to close your goal station 10 to 15 minutes before the end of class. Now this tip is one that I had to learn the hard way. <laughs> Having a closing time to your goal station will keep your students from rushing and throwing things around and not putting them back properly. 
This also gives you time to start wrapping things up for the end of class. I like to close the station about 10 to 15 minutes before the ending of our literacy block. I can walk around and I can check the room, I can check for pieces that need to get put back, I can make sure students have placed all their materials back, and more importantly, I can hold my closing meeting with the class. We discuss that things that we have worked on, we discuss our objective, and we like to celebrate any wins from the day. So your goal station will stay tidy and so will your classroom. You also won't feel rushed for any form of transitions. Tip number 10 is to create a routine to clean out materials or even change out some of those activities. This final tip will ensure that your goal station stays ready to go for every single class. Work to develop a routine to clean out materials or even change them out based on the space that you have inside of your classroom. For me, I will look through my materials at least once a month. I can make any additional copies, ensure that all of the pieces are there, and then sort through or even add activities that I have found that might be beneficial to the learning of my students. Decide on a day and time frame for when you would like to devote time to clearing through your goal station. And more importantly, stick to it. That's the important part. I also spend time at the end of each week just simply dusting and adjusting any of those materials that look like they might be sticking out of their folders. This is not a time for me to make copies, but rather a little tidy up from the week. So that is it. Those are my 10 tips for helping you to get started and manage your goal stations inside of your classroom. Let me know if you've already started implementing a goal station or you are looking to start building one inside of your own classroom. I certainly hope that these tips help to guide you. And of course, if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments so that I can respond. I would also really love for you to go and check out the other two videos on Goal Stations. Those links will be available in the description box. Thank you guys so much for coming and watching this video. Be sure to like, and I will catch you all next time. Bye.